Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, so just keep an eye. Um, today, because it's the first day of the week, I didn't want to go into like way detailed stuff that you haven't seen yet. So I wanted to start out with just the vocabulary matrices and various properties to kind of give you a good intro. Um, since I did have to move this for due to the holidays. And then uh, for week four will be uh, more later in the week with uh, an evening session. And that will be kind of the norm going forward. So what is a matrix? So a matrix and the plural is matrices. That's how it's pronounced. Uh, long E, that's a, um, the X to ES is a Latin um, extension or not extension is not the right word, but um, the Latin ending. So it's a rectangular array of numbers. If you're in computer science, you might be familiar with the word array. It's just like a list of numbers in a row. Um, you could have different dimensions, but usually it's a one by something. So it's basically like an Excel spreadsheet. If you can think of it that way, you've got like different cells and you got a table. So um, that's what a matrix is. We have specific notation where we have these brackets. Sometimes you'll see parentheses instead of brackets, but you need to have either the brackets or the parentheses to indicate a matrix. If you don't have those, you're not really indicating you have a matrix. So that's important because that's part of the notation. And so um, systems of equations are one of the things that we write as matrices, but you can also do tables and spreadsheets as matrices as well. So you've got this matrix. We always give the dimensions or the size as row first and then column. So the number of rows and then the number of columns. So here is an M by N. So you know how like you talk about two by fours in construction. Um, it's the time symbol is read as by for um, giving the size of a matrix. So it's always row and then column and you have the number of rows and then the number of columns. And then the numbers inside there are called entries. Uh, there's also, you can also call them elements, kind of depends on, um, you know, just preference, I guess, but they're called entries. And we always reference it by row and column. So row number and then column number, and then that's your subscript. And so that's how we refer to the different parts in a matrix. It's always row and then column. So if we're going to be using it for systems of equations, basically, and you take your system, which is written with the curly braces, and then you write it as a matrix, you basically ignore all the variables and only write the numbers in order that you see them. So if you have AX plus BY equals C, that's your first row is the first equation. So each row of the matrix is a, as a separate equation. And then the columns are the variables and then the constants are at the end. So AX plus BY equals C is A, B, C. And then the second row, you've got DX plus EY equals F. So that's D, E, F. And so um, it allows you to do work with a system without dealing with the variables as at all. It takes up less space. This is especially important if you are dealing with really, really big systems, which usually happens in a lot of um, really complex real world problems. A lot of times, if you're going into computer science, you may have to program a lot of matrix, matrices and matrix operations, and you're gonna be dealing with a lot of data and you may have thousands of rows. And if you can save space by not storing the variables, that's a good thing. So uh, using matrices allows us to save space on a computer and that's to our benefit. So when you write your equation, your, your system of equations and you turn it into a matrix, that is called the augmented matrix. So if you're asked to find the augmented matrix, it wants the equation written as a matrix. If you ignore the constants after the equal sign, then what you have is just the coefficient matrix. So there's a difference between the coefficient matrix and the augmented matrix. So you wanna be aware of that um, difference. So just to practice, we're gonna take these two systems and turn them into augmented matrices so you can see how this works. So the first one here, 
This has two equations. So I'm going to have two rows in my matrix. And so I start with the top. I've got five, two, and then 13. So I literally just write my numbers here and then negative three, four, and negative 24. So you make sure that they're lined up. The X's need to be lined up. The Y's need to be lined up. And then the constants are lined up. And then to make it a matrix, you need to have the, the brackets around it. And that's what makes it a matrix. So that is our augmented matrix. In the bottom, we've got three equations. So we're gonna have three rows. Um, so neither of these examples have like a variable on the other side, like an X on the right side or like a number on the left. But if, you're, if your equations are not in standard form with all the variables on the left and the numbers on the right, you need to put it in standard form. So in order to translate it to a matrix, you need to first have all of the variables on the left side and then any constants on the right are the equal. And then you can make it an augmented matrix. So you might have to you know, do some manipulations with your system first to put it in the right form. So our first row here, we've got negative 2x minus 4y plus z equals 13. So that's going to be negative 2, negative 4, 1, and then 13. So we have three variables, and then we have our constant. So this ends up having four columns. And then I've got 6x, so that's going to go under x. I don't have a Y variable. So if it's not there, you have to put a zero. We have to have a number in each spot. So you don't have a blank, you just put a zero. Then under Z, I have a negative seven, and then I have 22. And then the last one, I've got three X minus Y. So that's a negative one plus C, that's a one and then nine. And so that gives our augmented matrix. And when we read the numbers of a matrix, we usually read it row by row by row going left to right. So that's how we read these uh, matrices. So now let's go the other way. Let's take an augmented matrix, turn it into the system of equations. So X, Y, and then the last column is always the constant. So we usually always use X and then go alphabetical order X and Y or X, Y, and Z. So you can just always label that first column X and go from there. So that last column is gonna be after the equal sign. So my first row, I have five, two, and nine. So that's gonna be five X plus two Y equals nine. And then my second row is negative three X plus eight y equals zero. And then to make it a system, I need to use the curly brace around it to indicate these are taken together. This is a system of equations. Now, uh, the second example here, we've got three rows. So that's going to be three equations. And then we've got x, y, z, and then our equals. So I've got 4x minus 5y minus z equals 18. Then negative 11x. And then if you have a zero, you don't need to write that variable. So I can skip the y. Then I have plus 6z equals 25. And then 3x plus 8y. And then I don't have a z because it's zero equals negative 29. Now you don't have to leave gaps like I did. You can put them next to each other, but I like to keep them aligned when I'm translating just to make it clear and make it easier for me. So I don't forget what variable I have going with each number. And then again, you need to have that curly brace to make sure it says it's a system. So we've got our matrix. And I already mentioned that each element or each part is an entry or an element. Um, I tend to use the word element. Our text uses entry. And we refer to them by the row and then the columns. So if you have A, two, three, that's row two, column three. And then our dimensions, I said the word dimension is basically the size. It's row by column or M by N. 
if you have the same rows as the same columns, it's a square matrix because it literally will be a square, you know, like two by two, that's gonna be a square. Otherwise we call it a rectangular matrix. When we refer to the diagonal of a matrix and there is, that is always gonna be starting at the upper left corner going to the, the lower right. So that's what you call your diagonal. So that would be from A11 down to whatever the last one is, the bottom right. Um, on that example matrix, I have these dots. That just means that the pattern continues. So it's just kind of filling in the gap so I don't have to write every single part of the matrix. So if you have a matrix and it's only a single row, we call it a row matrix because it's just one row. If you have something that's only one column, then that's called a column matrix. And that, that makes sense from the, you know, what it's representing. So here, this is gonna be pretty simple. We're just determining the dimensions of the matrices. So the first one here, I've got three rows. So that's gonna be three. And then I count how many columns, they're four. So that's a three by four matrix. So it's always rows by column. So row by column. The one underneath it, I've got three rows again, but now I have two columns. So that is a three by two. So there are two special types of matrices. There's a zero matrix and then the identity matrix. And the identity matrix is way more important than the zero matrix. Uh, the zero matrix literally has nothing but zeros. And we use the letter O to represent the zero matrix because O looks like a zero. So that is the letter O um, when we call that. So be careful that it, you know, it doesn't look like a zero when you're using the zero matrix. Uh, the identity matrix, we use the letter I to represent. And so this has one in that diagonal and then zero everywhere else. So I have an example of a three by three. So this is a square matrix because the, the rows and the columns are the same. You see it, it forms a square. And so it's got ones only in the diagonal, one everywhere else. That is the identity matrix. And the identity matrix is really important. It allows us to do a lot of things uh, like find inverses. We want our coefficients to look like the identity matrix when we're doing a reduced row echelon form and Gauss-Jordan elimination, like it pops up a lot. So it's a really important concept. So um, we're gonna be starting this week by doing solving of matrices. We're going to use them to solve systems of equations. So that's why we, you know, learned about systems of equations last week. And now we're going to learn a new method to solve them. And we use the, what are called the elementary row operations. So there's three of them. The first one is that you can interchange two rows. So that basically means is you can rearrange the order of your rows. It's just rearranging the order of the equations. So, I mean, you can put the equations in any order. So that makes sense. Then we can multiply a row by a non-zero constant. And we um, indicate this by putting a number in front of the row number. So this is the same as multiplying an equation by a number on both sides, because a row is representing an equation. So it makes perfect sense that you can multiply a whole row by a number because you're just multiplying an equation by a number. Then uh, we've got add a multiple of a row to another row and replace an existing row. And so we, we're doing like multiple things at the same time as we're taking a row, multiplying it by a number, adding them together, and then replacing one of the rows with that result. So this is sort of like what we do with elimination. When you're doing this, the method of elimination, you're multiplying your equations by numbers, and then you're adding your equations together. And then when I was doing that last week, I would give it a new number, a new equation number. Here, you, when you do that, you're like, well, I don't need my old one anymore. I'm just gonna replace it with my new version of the equation. Um, so that's what we're able to do here. So solving a system of equations using 
matrices is basically doing the elimination method um, just with some other steps here. So these are what we use to solve matrices. And um, two matrices are called a row equivalent. If you can have one matrix, do these row operations and get to the other matrix. So they're called row equivalent because they basically are representing the same equations. They're just in different forms. So we're going to practice by doing row operations on this augmented matrix. So this does represent a specific system of equations. So as the system, this would be negative 3x plus 4y equals 22. 6x minus 4y equals negative 28. And that might be one that you might solve by elimination by adding the 4y and the negative 44y. You're welcome on your own to try to solve this system of equations and see if you get the same answer. In fact, I encourage you to do that, but we're just going to do the row operations. Um, these are specifically picked out for us already. Uh, the key thing, and you'll learn this when you actually watch the videos on solving, is that you can do these in multiple different orders. You can do different combinations of row operations. So the way that one person solves may not be the same way as someone else solves, but you'll get to the same result. It's all about what looks and makes sense in your own head when you're going through these row operations. Ideally, you want to do as few as possible. That's why technology is there. <laughs> they can figure that out. But you know, you know, when you're doing it by hand, you may not end up doing the best. But as long as you get there, that's what matters. So the first row operation we're doing here says R1 plus R2 goes to R1. So we're adding row one to row two. And then that result is being replaced in row one. So the way that I show my work here is I will line up I will take my numbers when I'm adding them together and just line them up. Should have given myself more space. Hold on. <laughs> I'm like, wait, if I'm going to add those, I don't have space for my answer. So, and then I will just add them together. And so this is, like I mentioned, if you look at the system, you think, let's do elimination. Let's add these equations because 4y minus 4y cancels out. So that's what we're doing here. A uh, negative three plus six is a positive three. Four minus four is zero. 22 minus 28 gives us a negative six. So we have three, zero, negative six. And then we're replacing that in row one. So we're going to get a new matrix. Three, zero, negative six. And then row two is staying the same. So I, I like to do my work on the side and then write my final answer matrix to the right of it. A lot of people will do this work in their head, like they'll add those together and then just put the answer straight. But I find when I do that, I tend to make math errors. And solving matrices, if you think you're prone to making math errors with systems of equations, you're much more likely to do with matrices. So I like to write down everything that I do to avoid those errors. So our second uh, row operation we're going to do, we're gonna do a combination. We're gonna multiply row one by negative two. Then we're going to take that answer, add it to row two, and then we're gonna replace row two with that answer. And you'll see that by doing that, we're going to be basically do an elimination on the X column. So I do this in two steps. First, I do the negative two times row one. So I have negative two and then row one. And this is our new row one of the matrix that I created. So three, zero, negative six now. And that gives me negative six, zero, and then 12. So I basically, I'm just distributing that negative two through my little matrix there. Then I'm adding that to row two. So now I'm going to do my adding. I have negative six, zero, 12. I'm adding that to row two, which is six, negative four, negative 28. Again, I should have written it a little smaller. And when I add those, I get zero, negative four, 
Okay, I'm gonna mess this up. <laughs> minus 28, negative 16. So now I'm gonna write my new matrix. We are replacing row two. So row one is gonna stay the same. So I still have three, zero, negative six. And now row two is gonna be zero, negative four, negative 16. So if we're looking at um, some color coding here, we replaced row one. We did row one plus row two, replaced it in row one. And then now we took row two and we changed row two. So I'm just highlighting what we replaced here so you can kind of see what's going on. So you can do color coding if it helps you to keep track of the row operations. Next, we've got a negative one fourth times row two, and then we're gonna replace that with row two. So if you're looking at row two, what's that, what is that, the, what that is going to do is basically take that negative four and turn into a one. So negative one fourth times row two. And so I'm gonna write row two here. And then when I multiply at negative one fourth through there, I get zero. And I get a positive one because a negative one fourth times negative four is one. And then I get a positive four. Negative one fourth times negative 16 is going to give me a positive four. And then I'm replacing row two with that. So row one is staying the same. Row two is now zero, one, four. And then we're going to take one third times row one and we're gonna replace that with row one. So one third and row one is three, zero, negative six. When you distribute, you get one, zero, negative two. And so that gives us one, zero, negative two, zero, one, four. So we just performed these row operations and we have this special form. Um, this particular form is called reduced row echelon form. You'll see that in a couple slides. But if you take your, your matrix or, and you turn it back into a system of equations, so our first column is X, we have no Y and then it equals negative two. Second column is Y, we don't have an X, so that's Y equals four. And we have basically now just solved our system so we got an answer of negative two for X and four for Y. So that's row operations. And this is how you show your work for the row operations. So what you see on the left, that's how you, you write what you did to the matrix. And that's really important because if you're doing this by hand, especially on the assignment, I need to know what you did. So you need to write those steps down and then write down your results so I can actually keep track of what's going on and make sure, you know, try to find your errors. Because if you don't write that down, all you see are numbers. <laughs> and it's really difficult to figure out what you did and where you may have gone wrong. So this is how you want to show your work. So we have what's called a row echelon form and then reduced row echelon form. And echelon is where the stair is a stair step. So it looks sort of like upside down stairs. So for row echelon form, your top equation has X, Y, and Z. Your next equation has Y and Z. And then your last one just has Z. So that's for three variables. If you have two variables, you'd have X and Y, and then you have Y. So you're losing a variable with each row. And the coefficient of the very first variable is always a one. So when you look at it as a matrix, you have a one in your diagonal, but then you have numbers every, everywhere else. And you have zeros underneath those ones. And that's what makes it row echelon form. So it's really important to notice that we've got that diagonal having ones and then zeros underneath them. And then after that is whatever. So that's row echelon form. Reduced row echelon form is where you have X, Y, and Z and you have your answers right there. So here 
you don't have your answer. You have the answers to one of the variables, but not all of them. Reduced row echelon form has the answers to all of them. And so you have X as your only variable, then Y is your only variable, then Z is your only variable. So there's only one variable in each one and you still have one in the diagonal, but what's special is that you get that identity matrix and then your last column is the numbers. So to have something in reduced row echelon form, you have your identity matrix and then one last column with numbers. So if I go back to that example we had, this was in reduced row echelon form because I have this identity matrix here and then that last row is, a, is the column of numbers. So that's reduced row echelon form and you just read it to get your answers. So you're gonna learn two different ways of solving matrices. You're gonna learn Gaussian elimination, which we did with systems of equations, and then Gauss-Jordan elimination. So Gaussian elimination is exactly the same as what we did last week, just in matrix form. You go to a point until you have an answer to one of your variables, then you back substitute it in to get the other variables. So it's exactly the same thing. It's just in matrix form. Gauss-Jordan elimination, you have to do more operations um, in matrix form to get that identity matrix, but then you don't need a back substitute because you have the answers there immediately. So you'll get the same answers either way. It's just a matter of preference. Do you prefer Gaussian elimination or Gauss-Jordan elimination and which one you prefer? So here's an example. This one is in Gauss-Jordan elimination. So this is not Gauss-Jordan, I'm sorry. This is in this, I should say the matrix is in row echelon form. Which we often abbreviate REF. And then reduced row echelon is RREF literally just the name, the both first letters. So this is row echelon form, and you get this when you do Gaussian elimination. So you need to use back substitution to solve the system. So first we want to write it as a system of equations. So the one, five, zero, so that's x, y, and then what it's equal to. So I have x plus five y equals zero. And then the second equation is giving me y equals six. So that is our system. And then to back substitute, I am replacing y in my top equation with six because that's what y is equal to. So you have x plus five times six equals zero. You get x plus 30 equals zero. And then when you solve, you get x equals negative 30. So our solution is negative 30 six. So it's still an ordered pair, just like our solutions for systems of equations. You just, you're just working with the, the equations differently because you're going to be working with them just in number form, and then you'll put them back into variable form. So this is the back substitution part. Once you get to row echelon form from Gaussian elimination, and then you put it back into your system and you solve. If you do reduced row echelon form, uh, the, which is Gauss-Jordan elimination, that is what we did right here, where you go so far and then you don't need to do back substitution because you already have your answers at the very end. So up to you which one you prefer. Now I'm gonna be strongly encouraging you to check your answers uh, with technology. There's tons of online matrix checkers out there for you. If you are going into engineering, excuse me, I strongly suggest you start learning Octave or if you're computer science and you just like to program. Um, I'm recommending Octave for engineering because I know that you will have to solve systems in a lot of later courses like ET310, which is circuit analysis. 
and you'll have like three variable systems, four variable systems that take a lot of time. And you will want to use matrices and use technology so that you don't have to spend all of your time solving when you're focusing on the engineering aspect. So I recommend that you start learning it now. And this is an example of how you would use it. You can download Octave or you can use um, it online. Octave online is really easy to use. It's based off of MATLAB, which is a math programming language often used in engineering. So to enter in a matrix, you have to give it a name, usually A equals, and then you do it row by row. And so at the end of each row, you put a semicolon and then you have the next row. And then you hit enter and then it will store it in the system. And then you either type in ref, R-E-F, that's the um, shortcut that I wrote here. If you use REF and then in parentheses A, you'll get row echelon form, or preferably you'll probably want to have it in reduced row echelon form to go straight to the numbers. And so that's RREF. And so you can see when you type that in, you have your identity matrix. And of course it's gonna have decimals there because it's working in decimals. And then it gives you the decimal approximations of your answers. So it's not going to give you the exact like fractional answers, but at least you can use it to check your work. So um, lastly, the last thing that you need to know is about inconsistent matrices. So a matrix is considered inconsistent if there's no solution. And this happens if you have a row of all zeros except for the last entry, the last number there. So an example, um, I could have, I'm just making up, let's say this is a two, like if you have a two equation um, system and you're solving and you end up something like this and you made it a system, you would have X plus five Y equals negative one, but then you have all zero X, zero Y, so you just get zero equals seven. And so, you get a contradiction if you have all zeros except for a number at the end. And that gives you a contradiction, which tells you there's no solution because zero does not equal seven. So look out for that when you're solving. If you get that zero, all zeros except for a number in the very last spot, that's telling you it's inconsistent. There's no solution. So just keep an eye out for that. So that is basically um, everything that you need to know to get started with matrices. From here, you are ready to watch the videos on solving using Gaussian elimination or Gauss-Jordan elimination. And then from there, you can start exploring matrix multiplication, um, finding inverses and matrices, figuring out determinants. Um, but this is at least the basics to get you started for the week. So hopefully you find this helpful. So I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday and I will talk to you later. Bye.